Welcome to the latest episode of Branding the Experience, where we discuss ways where we can create environments where employees actually want to come to work and customers want to keep coming back. I am Ken Bader, your host for Branding the Experience. I'm also the founder of Bader Training and Consulting and the author of the book, The Formula for Business Success Equals B Plus C Plus S, a discussion on brand, culture, and strategy alignment. And what we're going to talk about today, of course, being branding the experience is the B. We're going to talk about branding your communications. I want to talk about two elements going back to the tagline of creating an environment where first, employees want to come to work, and second, customers want to keep coming back. In branding our communications, one thing that we don't always do very well is leveraging the talent that we have in our small business, whether it's a restaurant or a credit union or a hair salon or financial advisory company or, or what have you, that you know we always seem to, to want to do things on our own, either as a business owner or as, or as an executive. But communicating the important pieces of the brand, the important elements of the brand to our entire staff and obtaining ideas from them can be very, very valuable. Now, you know, if you're a big enough organization where you actually have your own marketing person or maybe even your own marketing department, I'm not saying that we abdicate or delegate or subjugate whatever Kate word you want to use to our frontline staff or staff that aren't necessarily marketing. But as I've said before, while marketing is a part of branding and marketing, marketing is a specific area of attention and skill, branding is more global. Your branding department, frankly, is everybody in the organization. As a former client uh, once told me and his whole staff, he ran a number of, of health clubs. He said, regardless of job title or job description, all have the same duty, which is member retention and member acquisition. And that's what branding is about, making sure that we're all part of the brand department. So the first step in branding your communications is going to your staff and not only communicating with them, but getting ideas on how we can best communicate our brand to our target market. I guarantee you if there's there are people there that are, are working with customers day in and day out at your business, regardless of what your business is, I guarantee you they know more about your customer and prospective consumer than you will ever know because they're, they're there with them every day. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is in getting customers to want to keep coming back, we need to communicate with them in the way that they want to be communicated to. Uh, much like I talked about in my 52 Weeks of Better Business Strategy article this week when I had the distinct pleasure to talk to uh, business coach Melissa Galt. You know, we talked about communication and, and she talked about uh, the fact that nobody wants to use the phone anymore. Everybody wants to communicate via email or text or social media or what have you. And remembering that, of course... The phone is one viable tool to communicate with our customers and, and prospective clients. But my point is, and I, I use this with a lot of clients, is that we need to use the tool or tools that the consumer or our customer, our client, wants us to use to communicate with. And this is more tactical. If if the customer wants to actually have a phone call, then darn it, let's let's use the phone. If if our potential customer is going to find us and find it more useful to communicate via social media, then damn it, we, we better be using social media 
and following up with messages and engagement uh, that we may have from customers and potential customers. If we're not doing that, we're missing out on a, a great branding tool and segment to communicate with our potential customers. And also, you know, let's utilize email if it makes sense or text. Uh, case in point, I have one client that never returns a phone call. Uh, very, very rarely, if ever, returns an email. But, <laughs> darn it, when I send a text on the phone, you know, I get a response in almost 30 seconds. Uh, almost every time. That's his choice of, com of a communication tool, so I use it. There's another client where, frankly... Yeah, I can email and I can use the phone, but what's most effective is face-to-face. -face. So I certainly use the phone when I can because it's more efficient. But if there's any real heavy subjects that we need to cover and it's not terribly urgent, I always make a point to talk to him face-to-face -face on those particular issues. So one, in branding our communications, Let's leverage the talent that we have in our business and communicate with and through our, our, our employees, making sure that we get input from them. And also, let's use the, all the communication tools available to us so that we can brand ourselves and communicate in the way and using the tool that our customers want most. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today. And here's hoping that those tips help you to brand the experience with your unique business. Take care.